So you make a list of hypotheses. This is obviously not, you know, not the natural phenomenon. And uh, the extraterrestrial explanation seemed to be the best one. Why shouldn't we? We know that there, there's got to be life throughout the universe. So why shouldn't it be able to come here, especially since there must be civilizations there that are you know, thousands, if not millions of years ahead of us? But then as you, as you get more and more data, you realize that's not what the witnesses are describing. <laughs> Many, what the witnesses are describing is something that in many cases comes out of nowhere, disappears into nowhere. There are cases of objects becoming transparent on the spot, mm -hmm. physical objects, material objects. And I have no, no question that the, you know, people have said, well, the valet doesn't believe uh, this is physical. Well, of course it is physical. It's material at some times, but it can also change shape. It can also merge with other objects, and it can also disappear on the spot. Well, if it does that, uh, then it could be from anywhere, anytime. We always try to, you know, to discredit the old legends trying to say, no, these people were crazy, they thought everything was possible. But now we have the videos, and that's the big difference. Could you believe there are videos now of probably angels in the sky? And then I started looking at, at some of the things that didn't fit. And one of the things that you know, I had to ask is, when did this actually stop? Uh, every UFO book starts with, you know, on June 24, 1947, Kenneth Arnold saw something about mm -hmm. Ukrainians. Right? Well, that's not really true. I mean, you, we have data from the 30s and the 20s and, and from uh, 1896 and 1897 all over the United States, and then you can go back in, in history. And many people don't want to hear that. They want to hear that this is... Uh, you know, if you follow the first level extraterrestrial theory, then ETs, uh, you know, discovered us uh, when the atom bomb went off and they came here to study us. Well, that's not what the data says. So when did it start? And I found, uh, as I found an, an enormous wealth of data going back to medieval times and, and even before. Of course, as you go back in history, you lose the the cultural context, and it's harder to, to, to understand the data, but in medieval times, there were records, especially the records of the church, that were kept very, very carefully uh, about strange phenomena. You know, the, the, the skeptics are always saying, well, give us your best case and we'll take it apart. There is no such thing as one best case in, in any field. You, you have to look at an accumulation of cases and look for patterns, and, and then that's how the phenomenon reveals itself to you. And for a long period of time, or for a period of time, I believed it was extraterrestrial. I now believe it is interdimensional. Uh, the phenomena. In other words, we're looking at so-called spirit beings from another dimension. And uh, I back this up in the new book by equating it to ancient manuscripts where these beings manifested uh, to, to human beings and what their reactions were, and then comparing it to reactions present day of people who have had encounters. And the similarities are striking. Mm -hmm. First of all, you say to yourself, why would, why would, let's say, anyone deliberately crash saucers in Roswell, New Mexico, and then allow the bodies to be retrieved. What are these bodies, in fact? And this, it took me a long time to figure this out. And this is a theory, okay? There's a difference between the graves, the little guys, right, that we see that have now been enculturated with the big black right. slanted eyes that are about four feet tall, all right? Those, mm -hmm. Let's just call them the graves because pretty much everyone knows them as graves. But there's another creature which, which people and, and um, abductees talk about that they see on board the ships, and these are tall beings, and they, they assume different forms. Sometimes they can appear as reptilian, other times they can appear as insectoid, other times they can appear as Nordic. In other words, in my opinion, they're shapeshifters. Now, why would I say that? What backs it up? 
there's a scripture once again from our from our spiritual handbook which says that basically fallen angels can appear as angels of light if they so choose okay okay they can appear as angels of light if they so choose that's a shapeshifter but it shapeshifts it can appear as whatever it wants to appear insectoid reptilian who knows what the thing really looks like in my opinion it's probably a reptilian apparently there was some sort of a confrontation there was some sort of a war between these beings sides were drawn up and and we're kind of like we're almost like cannon fodder in a way it's unseen war which is happening in another dimension all around us that we don't see so my point is this what if the grays are nothing more than some sort of a biological suit that enables the demons let's say to to interface in this dimension that's what I think the grays are that's why they're expendable me thinking I wonder if there's some sort of like a biological clone or some sort of a you know a body if you will that these demons can interface inhabit and then of course move about in this three-dimensional time-space continuum when you go back and you read the book of Enoch which by the way is found on the Dead Sea Scrolls it amplifies the mischief that these fallen angels got into uh, in and around the time of Genesis 6 which is why it was a global flood because the Nephilim were on the earth and these guys were all over the earth and some of these some of these skeletons were that have been on Earth, specifically in Turkey, were over 30 feet tall. As, as we came, as we pushed west in Ohio and different places, they found mounds, and they would do primitive archaeological digs. And this is all this is documented. I'm not making this stuff up. They found skeletons, oftentimes that reached over nine feet in length, with six fingers, six toes, and red hair. Now, one of the great mysteries of the West is what happened to these giants. There was nearly 60 skeletons brought out of this cave, but today they're nowhere to be found. Is it that there is some kind of archaeological cover-up that has occurred here? The main point is, is that these, that term is used of angels, fallen angels. And the offspring of those fallen angels with human women has produced a hybrid called a Nephilim. In the Hebrew, the term means the fallen ones. Also, the term is gigantes, which doesn't mean giants. It means earthborn. There was a gene pool problem on the planet Earth. Is that where the Bible then right. says that Noah was perfect? He yes. wasn't perfect as a, uh, his, a his, his generations. Man. Verse nine, he was perfect in his generations. The his word DNA. perfect is tamim. Is tamim meaning physical defects? You know, when you see something like that, it's overwhelming. It will change your world view. And is that the coming great deception that ancient manuscripts warn us of? Uh, here, here's, here's a prophecy from 2,000 years ago that what, what is coming on the earth will be so bizarre that even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. An object videotaped by many and seen by thousands over several nights in the Arizona sky in 1997. Major sighting here. 